Um, one of the things that, strike, that struck me when I came up here looking at this camp is that I've been in camps before. A couple of years ago, I was doing a lot of work in Sri Lanka. I've been to refugee camps before. And people in the refugee camps were there because of the existence of war. You're in this camp, a different kind of refugee camp, because of the existence of a different kind of war. This isn't a war that involves bullets and guns and soldiers. It's a war for our hearts and our minds and our souls. It's a war for the soul of our society. What does it mean for us to be in a society together? What does it mean for us to be human beings on this planet together? In working in Sri Lanka, in working in Asia, throughout Asia, in working in Africa, in working in Europe, in working in South America. I've been to 38 different countries. I've been to 100 different cultures. All of us have the same issues and all of us have the same problems and all of us have the same opportunity. And that opportunity is to create from the mess that we've got right now a world that actually works for all beings. Now, you'll notice that I didn't say all human beings. Definitely not saying all Americans. This has to go beyond America. One of the pieces of work I was doing in Sri Lanka is asking the question, how do we bypass all, all the existing governmental structures and create a new government? How do we do that? So we started talking to people in, in the villages. We completely bypassed the media. We knew the media was a problem. It wasn't a, a vehicle of a solution. We had to create a whole new media. And we started asking people of all walks of life that same question. What is it that you want to leave to your children? What is it that you want to leave to your grandchildren? And we started recognizing that everybody was saying the same thing. The people on the right were saying the same thing as the people on the left. If you ask a question that divides people, you're going to get a divisive answer. If you ask a question that pulls people together and pulls their heart vision together, then you're going to get a very, very different response. And with a team of just 30 people, 30 young men and women, we took that vision all around the island. We took it to all the central squares. We took it out of where we were, and we took it to where they are. So everybody bought into that. And that then creates the floor for a new constitution in Sri Lanka, and that's the way you get to a new constitution in America. Thomas Jefferson himself said the Constitution shouldn't have lasted more than 20 years. He said every generation should write a new Constitution. Well, we're just 230 some odd years overdue. And from what we have right now, from the energy that you've got right here, you can take this energy and start creating people's forums. Start talking to people. You know the best place to create a people's forum? Get in line at Walmart, okay? You don't have to, you don't have to buy, that's right, get in line at Walmart, because you want to talk to the center of the country, and you ask the person in back of you in line, and you ask the person in front of you in line, what is it that you want? Do you really want the plastic crap that Walmart is selling? Or do you want something more meaningful for your children? When we start taking that to that bus right there. Get on the bus, I guess you gotta pay a couple bucks for it. And what the, what the mobile leaders were doing in Sri Lanka is that they would take the long distance buses and turn them into long distance forums. They would ask people on the bus, what is it that you want? Where do you want? Everybody knows that the society that we've got right now can't work. 
We know the society is terminal. The question is, what comes next? 